The year is 2014. You queue for a game of Hearthstone. On turn 1 you summon Zombie Chow, which came with the next Armor's Adventure. On turn you play another new card, Haunted Creeper. Turn 3 Master for Battle, and on turn 4 you summon a Pilot to Treader. The game is fun and you know what to expect when you go into a match. Fast forward 6 years to the current year. In addition to the basic keywords like Taunt, Battle Cry, and Death Battle, we now get all of these. And they are all not as strong or important as the main thing Hearthstone resolves around nowadays. We are talking about this little word that was printed on more and more cards. It can win your games, it can lose your games, and there is nothing to influence it whatsoever. The word of course is random. See, in the past years every expansion brought new cards to the game that randomly generated other cards and make it so that half the cards you will encounter did not start in the player's deck. But that does not sound too bad. It's a game after all and having more random effects seems like fun. Well, not really. Just imagine this scenario. You play an evil cable rat which gives you 1 out of 7 random lackeys. The random lackey you get discovers a random spell for you which in turn does something random. And now after getting like 5 random cards worth 15 mana in total both you and your opponent had no idea how you got there. It's just random. And that is the main thing that changed over the years on Hearthstone. While we had some limited RNG in the beginning with cards like Piloted Shredder and Unstable Portal, we now have entire games in which you will encounter more randomly generated cards than anything else. My name is Solemn, as apparently the arch nemesis of Wolverine now, and I've been playing this game for over 5 years now. And today we will take a look at how Hearthstone used to be and how it is right now. If you have not played the game in the past few years, let me give you a quick summary of everything that happened. In April 2016, they introduced the wild format next to the standard format. While standard only allows the last year of cards to be used, wild gives you access to all cards, making it the format with the most broken decks. We had a bunch of single player modes like Dungeon Run and the Boomsday Lab, and in 2019 we got Battlegrounds, an auto battler that is more popular than all the other modes combined. We got Demon Hunter as the 10th class that nobody likes because it's just broken, and they also changed the ranking system a little. They introduced 5 stages from Bronx to Diamond, with 10 ranks each before Legend. But the game still plays the same way. Your deck has to have 30 cards, you start the game by 1 mana crystal, yada yada same game. We might have some new hero portraits here and there, but you probably remember this green haired guy. His name is Morfurion. When you played him back then, you probably tried to use cards like Wild Growth to ramp mana, and finished the game by using a fun combination of Force of Nature and Savage Raw, which did a minimum of 14 damage and was usually enough to get a fast win. Now the class plays a little different. The main archetypes are Token Druid, which can end games as early as turn 3 by summoning more and more minions and giving them plus 1 plus 1. There is Jade Druid, which just uses this 1 mana spell to win the game, as you can shuffle it into your deck the moment you're out of cards, and then you summon a larger and larger green man. You can play new cards like Guardian Animals to summon 2 beasts from your deck, which draw you 2 cards each when you attack. Oh, and they also gain Rush, which is like Charge, but you cannot attack face the first turn. Or if you like combos, you can do something so fun you definitely want to play it. It's called Linecracker Druid. What you do is simple. You play that beefy boy, target him with some bees, and double the attack over and over, until you feel like you want to convert that into armor. Then what you do is just wait because your opponent literally cannot deal enough damage to win the game. And they either die to fatigue or they just leave because it's so much fun. Now next we got Hunter. Hunter used to be the smog class. All you did in there was you applied aggressive minions like Abusive Sergeant, Leopard Nomad, Knife Juggler, and then you targeted the enemy's face. Now that is a little different, mainly because all those cards I just mentioned were nerfed, but also because they made something like mid-range and a control hunter archetype almost viable. Instead of just blocking the entire battlefield to only focus on the enemy's face, you can now target your hero power on minions. In addition to that, a Highlander hunter saw more and more play. Besides Reno Jackson, there are a couple more cards that benefit a deck build like this. Dragon Queen Alexstrasza gives you two random dragons that can just win you the game on the spot because they're random, and this guy named Zephyrus is quite an interesting case. You can wish for the perfect cards, which if you never played him just sounds confusing. Zephyrus takes all the public information like health of each hero, mana, and minions on the field into consideration, and then offers you three cards on the classic and basic set for you to choose from. That often leads you to either clearing the board or getting some good value. Hunter in all honesty is not the best class right now, and that is mainly because all the things you can do while playing Hunter can be done better and more efficient in other classes, but it can still go face and deal tons of damage. But now let's take a look at a nerfed hero. Jaina. Mage should be the most known class for you, as it is the class we all had to play in the tutorial. Now back in the old days, there were two different types of mages. You either used Frost Nova and Doomsayer to stall the game as a freeze mage, to then drop Fireball Man and listen to Aha! over and over, or you played Max to summon a bunch of minions and then run face. Some things stayed the same, some things changed. The popular decks right now are Secret Mage, which literally just plays a ton of zero cost cards and point face until you win. Quest Mage, which cheats by getting an extra turn after you summon a bunch of zero cost giants because why would you ever pay mana for things. And lastly a deck that is getting some popularity called Turtle Mage. This turtle allows you to cast a spell from your deck and when you select this potion you get the card back to your hand, but as a one mana version this time. Again, why would things cost mana? Now all you do next is just go infinite with that until you deal enough damage to win the game. You can always freeze the enemy's field. 
have Ice Block Up and Point Face. But there is one last thing that Mage does well, and that is random. Pages of cards full of random effects, with York Sparks being your best friend here, casting 10 random things randomly. But let's move on to Paladin, which is far less random. This one is going to be quite short, because you had and you still have like two main archetypes of playing Paladin. You either cover it well and use your mana each turn with midrange Paladin, or you go for a clear win condition, like anything can happen, to murgle murgle that enemy down. Now we get something similar, but more effective. To just win the game on the spot, you can become a Death Knight and summon 4 guys on horses that literally win the game when summoned. Midrange Paladin also become a lot better as you now have access to Librams. Those cards reduce the cost of certain cards in your deck, so things like Equality can be better and cost 0 mana instead of 4. Or you just get Explorer's Head for 0 mana constantly because why would things cost mana? If you're not that patient though, you can also play 2 other decks that are often seen and fairly aggressive. And those are a combination of Max and Hand Buff which just summons dozens of stats so pretty much free. Or you just hero power over and over because this dragon-like thing upgrades your hero power makes it twice as good for you for the same cost. But here's a heads up. If you ever played Priest at any point, it's still the exact same. It is still the most annoying class in Hearthstone, so at least it stayed true to that. You now have more control cards than ever, and more board clears than any other class. You also have more and more random generation through Galakrond, a card that replaces your hero and adds something random to your hand. The most seen priest deck in wild right now is Raza Priest, which was introduced in 2016 to make your hero power cost zero and became broken in 2017 when you get a hero power with Shadow Reaper Anduin, which deals to damage and can be used again whenever you play a card. That combined makes it so that you can deal lethal damage by using your zero cost hero power over and over. This guy, fun fact, was once nerfed to make your hero power cost one mana, but then Blizzard was like, eh, why should things cost mana? And then they rewarded that nerf. In short, Priest is either controlling the bot to make people unhappy, or they deal way too much damage for free. Rogues, on the other hand, had quite an interesting evolution. Oil Rogue was a draw heavy deck that resolved around making a big weapon, playing Auctioneer to draw a bunch of cards and use Blade Flurry to deal way too much damage for free. Well, that got nerfed and became unplayable. Gladly, Rogue had all those other archetypes, like playing aggressive and going face, and well, that, that is still true. You can play a bunch of aggressive cards like Pirates or Kingsbane, a legendary weapon that keeps all buffs and then you aim face, or you know that's actually, that's pretty much it. But Solome here asked, didn't you just say that Rogue had an interesting evolution? Yeah, well I lied. The only real viable decks for Rogue are really just play aggressive and go face, both in standard and wild. You could try to play control Rogue, but that is just bad. Shaman though had an interesting evolution, and this time I'm not lying, I think. This class started out to be completely unplayable. I mean, back then you could barely play a mid-range Shaman, but it was far worse than most other classes. Over time though, we learned that Shaman is a really aggressive class, and while in 2016 you played your Tunnel Troc into Totem Golem, and then I'm faced with Crackle, you now have Even Shaman, which summons Totems for one mana, and then buffs them, to eventually use Crackle face. You can also play Big Shaman, which, as you can tell by the name, is about playing big minions. Some of the deck names are really just straightforward. You summon stuff, and summon even more stuff, and that stuff will be reborn over and over until you just win because your stuff is too big. You can also play this one minion that got introduced and pretty much broke the game by itself. It's called Shutterwalk. This guy replaces all your battle cries that happened this game, so when you play a doppelganger to summon copies, grumble to get minions back to your hand, and then anything else, you can also go infinite when you play this minion. Usually, you just include a battle cry like Life Drinker to deal damage and heal, as well as some AoE and freeze effects to lock out your opponent. This is really just watching animations over and over, while Shaman either has to do something incredibly broken to be played, or just summon totems and then buff them. Warlock is different. While every class can be played in different ways, like having an aggressive deck, a combo deck, and a control deck, Warlock is by far the most versatile of them all, back then and even right now. Back in 2015, you had two different archetypes, those were Handlock, which summoned Twilight Drakes and Giants, to then taunt them up and overwhelm your opponent, or you played Zoo, which is just you summon a bunch of low-cost minions. Also don't forget, Zoo was invented by Reynard. Nowadays you can literally do anything in Warlock. Want an OTK? You have Magathon. Want to play discard cards? Well, you just discard the right things because it's random. Ever felt like summoning a giant board full of demons? Just include Voidcolor, Voidlord, and Maganus into your deck and you are set for that. As a Warlock, you can do absolutely anything in the game, and that is very likely just because it has the best hero power. But there is one class left. Technically two because Demon Hunter exists, but it didn't exist back then, so we only talk about the last class, Warrior. Wallet Warrior was a description for the fairly expensive control deck in the past, which had a ton of legendaries. You could also play Patron Warrior, which eventually got nerfed, or you made use of Pirates to aim face. In 2020, Warrior looks pretty much exactly like that, just with better cards. It's similar to Rogue in that way. You either play Auto or Deadman's and Warrior, which is just incredibly control heavy, or you use Pirates or Galakrond and then deal damage and go face. 
What you could consider in your archetype is Bomb Warrior. You play those cards that shuffle bombs into the enemy's deck. Those bombs deal 5 damage when drawn, and because the entire draw is random, you might just have random lethal, or you don't, because random. And that card mechanic is pretty much what sums up Hearthstone nowadays. While it started out as a game that resolved around decision making and strategy, it now heavily resolves around random effects. How lucky can you be and how unlucky can your opponent be? More and more cards that were introduced in the recent sets have an effect that either generates something randomly or just have a straight up random effect. Or in order to actually play cards that have no random effect, they have to be power creeped. This happened hundreds of times to old cards. It makes it so that at least 500 cards are completely unplayable. Like I would say like 20-25% of all cards in the entire game cannot be played because it's a better alternative that is just more efficient for the same mana cost. And as it seems right now, with the competitive scene moving from Twitch exclusively to YouTube, not a single wild tournament this year from Blizzard's side, and the main focus relying on battlegrounds, Hearthstone might just be known as the game that is like teamfight tactics, but with cards. I still hope that this tweet from Froden becomes true, and Hearthstone is actually cemented for the next decade, but so far everything outside of Battlegrounds is really just declining. The numbers are all going down, and the only things left for me to do are playing stupid decks to have fun in the game and making videos like these. My name is Solemn, and this has been a lot more work than I expected. Thanks a lot for watching, liking the videos free, bunch of you are subbed. What do you think about the game? What made you stop? Is it the fact that you have to spend like $300 each expansion because it's way too expensive? That the game become boring or stale because it's pretty much the exact same thing over and over for the past 5 years? Or is it something else? Let me know down below. Maybe Battlegrounds is our final destination, and we all gotta end up playing auto chess. Let's just hope that the new game mode they talked about is going to bring some people back to the game. And in case the numbers go down further, I can always make Pokemon videos or something like that. Take care.